everybody, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, sorry for starting a little late. We had one hell of a snowstorm. I am Calvin Von Crush, the occult collector. And uh, this week we've got Beards, Big Dudes, Bugmen, and Bigfoot. Um, I'm here with my very good friend, Mark May. Uh, he's, a, he's an American folk artist. Um, he happens to make monsters as a passion. And he's had a couple paranormal experiences that we're gonna touch base on. But I think we need to walk through this menagerie of all these creatures. So first and foremost, I think we're gonna start with the little guy out in front. Who's this little dude? This is a swamp slob. It's my take on the classic lizard man, creature of the Black Lagoon, uh, frog person that throughout American folk tales all across the country, primarily in the Southeast, we have these swamp monsters and that's my uh, take on it. And that was inspired by these vintage hinges that I found kind of that web look that a swamp man might have. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. I mean, he looks very, very uh, amphibious just from it, very reminiscent of the creature from the Black Lagoon with those little points sticking out. Uh, these guys also look amphibious. What, what can you tell us about that? So this is my take on the classic Columbian frog, who's probably one of my muses. So in the 1950s, there's a sighting of four amphibious, four foot tall creatures coming out of the Little Miami River in Loveland, Ohio. Uh, causes quite a stir. There's a gap until like the like early 70s. A police officer saw one, shot at it, and it was a quote, tailless iguana. Oh. So um, we have a couple of friends in common that are really uh, Loveland frog guys, our friend Brian. Yeah. Baltimore. So I've been feeling inspired uh, lately to make more Loveland frogs. So this is what I call the juvenile. It hasn't fully developed yet, the thinner body. When they get a little bit more robust, they get fatter, and it's when it's eating a dragonfly. Yeah, they so. get built more like us later on in life. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what else is up here? I think I know what this is. Is this a Hopkinsville Goblin? It is a Hopkinsville Goblin, 1955, Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Uh, let's talk about that case to anybody who's not familiar because I think this one's a really good case. So Hopkinsville Goblin um, is a real isolated, happened one night on one farm outside of Hopkinsville, Kentucky, a uh, general area where Edgar Casey is sleeping prophet is from. So it's a very area steeped in all kinds of you know religious and spiritual things are happening down there. A family spends multiple hours having a gunfight with these four foot tall goblin-like people that had big bat ears and weird heads with bulging uh, yellow eyes. Uh, different accounts, they were gray or blue or green. I kind of go with the light blue um, color scheme. And then I put a KY on the front for Kentucky because it's kind of an obscure cryptid or he might have been an alien, I'm not really sure. Life's always better with a little extra KY. <laughs> That's so. true. Um, you know, as a skeptic, um, I've, I've reviewed this case a couple of times. I watched a number of specials of it. It very much to me, uh, just like Mothman sadly, sounds like some kind of territorial squabble between a big bird, uh, owls. I mean, horned owls are gigantic, man. They're very, very, um, uh, terrifying when you see them up close. So I, I wonder if it was like a mating ritual or some sort and these people just uh, stumbled into it. You know, wrong place, wrong time and absolutely things happen. And even with all those gunshots, there was no DNA evidence, there was no blood on the ground, there was no corpse, there right. was nothing like that. Well, the military did come out, the local police came out, there was evidence of gunshots and some kind of squabble went on, like you said. Um, but it's just like Bigfoots, when we see them get shot, they exactly. seem not to get hit, they seem to go into another portal to another existence, so it's right. you know, kind of... We're going to touch on that later too, because some of us think Bigfoot isn't a uh, tangible creature, we okay. think it might be a spirit. So um, these actually come from like the same time frame as Mothman um, and some of the other guys. It's kind of like um, a chunk of American history where people were just so passionate about UFOs and monsters. I mean, we had people talking about giant penguins coming out of the ocean and walking around the beaches in Florida. Right. Some of the stories got very, very robust and it kind of just died off. Um, do you think it was technology catching up to us? So we kind of lost that sense of wonder. We were going into the Adam age. I, I, I've always said that I, I'll, I'll give credit where credit's due. John Keel, who wrote Mothman Prophecy, once said there's a cosmic joker of the universe. It's always one step ahead of you. Yeah. I mean, you read Mothman Prophecy, and I'll save that for you guys at home to do. There's all kinds of stories where he'd go, I'm going to pull up at this house out of the random the person was waiting for him. Oh, I have this package for you, John Keel. I didn't know who you were, but here you are. Right. Um, again, I go back to the 1800s. You have the airships that were sighted all across Central, Amer Central parts of North America, mm -hmm. uh, Texas especially, having these giant airships flying overhead. They were just one step ahead of Zeppelins. We get Zeppelins. They have discs. We get discs. Right. They have flying triangles. So I think whatever this is, and I like to say this is, it's a puppet master of sorts. It's always one step ahead of us. So these monsters, I think some of them are rooted deeply in folklore, and some of them are, you know, 
B movies of the fifties running wild a little bit. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree, man. Um, it, it's funny. There's always overlap too in different fields of the paranormal. You know, uh, with Mothman, they talk about UFOs and extraterrestrials. They talk about right. Native American curses. Right. Uh, they talk about it possibly being a spirit or a phantom. Uh, then we have government conspiracies with Men in Black. It just everything gets lumped together depending on what your main focus and obsession is. Right. Uh, let's move on, man. What else do we got here? So we got the uh, amphibious guys out of the way. I'm going to lay them down. And we're going to get to him a little later because he's part of a bigger collection, right? So kind of amphibious, jumping over the here. I'm going to get into the yeah. lizard men. Um, so the first one in the blue here is a Seiko River Monster. He's from Maine. Now, depending on who you talk to, Seiko River Monster is called the White Ape. And it goes back to a native early colonial men shot and killed um, some native indigenous people. A curse was placed on the area, and for the next 300-something years, a creature has been seen stonking around the waters of the Saco River Basin. So my take on it is I, I kind of got off again into a, if this creature's living in the water, it's probably going to have some kind of fins, or it's going to be webbed right. for, for, for traction and performance. So that's my take. Coming over here, we're going down into South Carolina to the Skateboard Swamp, and this is my take on the Skateboard Lizard Man. He was prevalent pretty much in the 70s. I mean, people still they see him nowadays. He comes up, he scratches cars, he's got long claws. Mine, I, I kind of have, yeah, he's, he's eating little frogs. He's a Look frog He's got eater. a full belly. He's got some frogs in here, these little vintage frogs that he's nailed in. I was thinking, what does a, what does a lizard man eat? He's probably gonna eat the things that he can get his hands on. I'm thinking frogs. I actually have a friend, uh, Fleetwood Covington is an artist in South Carolina and he's had experiences with Bigfoots and stuff in the swamp. So I think this is not a, a long stretch of the imagination that these lizard men might live out there. Personally, I find them a little more scary than our hairy friends in the forest. Right. Uh, this looks familiar. This looks like uh, a monster from Texas, Mexico. Is this a yep. chupacabra? This is a chupacabra. Excellent. Yeah, I could tell by the spike ridges on his back. So uh, early back in the day, 2008, 2009, I was attending the Mothman Festival um, and I was one of the first people to, down there really to making monster art. Uh, and I, the first year I just made Mothman a Bigfoot, next year I, I gosh, branch out, Chupacabras and the other, other cast of Motley Sorts. So the Chupacabras came into it, and it's really funny about Chupacabras is I live in Pennsylvania, we have a very large population of Hispanic uh, descent in our area. So I, I work in an urban school district and my kids are scared of the Chupacabra. El Chupacabra, oh yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. no, no, no El Chupacabra. They don't want to talk about it. Um, I had a friend that lived in Lake Cuba, New York, and years ago, was recite, telling me how there were sightings of lizard people up there. And it was like, again, going back to John Keel, the name game, Lake Cuba, and all of a sudden, chupacabras were showing up in Lake Cuba, which has nothing to do with right, their right, descent. Right. Now again, are they hairless dogs? Or, or are they big lizard men who yeah. jump and fangs and goat suckers? I, I don't know, but I'd like to think it's the goat sucker variety. Personal personally. opinion, coyotes with mange, man. We've seen a couple specimens and they're absolutely horrifying. Yeah. Uh, bears with mange too. Have you ever seen a bear with mange with no I have. fur on it? There was that famous uh, Bigfoot picture. That yeah, it's the, it's the things twisted. of nightmares, man. Well, you and I were out earlier today and we saw a red fox. Yeah, we were joking. Cause uh, so Meriden, the town that we're in right now actually has a cryptid legend um, surrounding um, Hubbard Park. It's the story of a black dog. Now there's a number of black dog legends that usually come from European, uh, especially Irish descendants. And this area is heavy in Irish descendants because they had factories and stuff like that. So it's no um, you know, chance that we would have a black dog legend here. And it says that if you see the black dog three times, it's a harbinger of your own death and you're gonna die. So I'm driving Mark around, showing him the sites in the state. And we were going to a dinosaur uh, footprint quarry and sure as shit, running across the road, I go, oh, look, dude, we got a brown dog. And when we got closer, it wasn't a dog at all. It was actually a fox and he was in really rough shape. He was suffering from mange. So yeah, he should have been like a bright orange, but he was definitely filthy. He was a and filthy missing. brown. He was not looking in his prank. Yeah. And I said, it's probably a chupacabra. And still, it was pretty bright out too. So yeah. I wouldn't doubt if that thing's on his way out and very sick. Yeah. Uh, this looks amphibious as well, correct? Yeah, this is like one of the Sullivan County Swamp Monster. Again, I'm not sure if we're, uh, my memory is failing me with Sullivan County, but again, this is going back into the Creature of the Black Lagoon, south, southeastern United States, the, the swamp creatures that people are seeing down there. And this was a trophy head. I just started doing heads for a while, and that was, this was from an old boat, and I thought this was really cool and kind of yeah. gave that amphibious look. You ever see uh, Merman from uh, Masters of the Universe? He was oh, one of, of Skeletor's Yeah, yeah, yeah. He really kind of has those ridges around his eyes like him. He yeah. definitely has that strong.